once again, good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining this uh, the launch of uh, the business environment tool. Uh, so we will have an hour and a half uh, where I will get help from my colleagues from Rubismo. So we have three partners that have been working actively on the on the business environment tool. Uh, so it is myself, Justin Casimir from Rise, and my colleague Tula Roberi that couldn't make it uh, today, but she has done a um, very good job uh, helping on, on this on this task. Uh, then from ATB, we have Mulugan and Philip. Do you want to say hi? There we have Mulugan. And I think Philip is also in the room uh, somewhere. Uh, I think there's also Richard uh, Orozco uh, in this meeting from ATB. And then we have uh, Louise and Brendan from IRL the Irish rural link. You say hi. Good oh, morning, everyone. Good morning. It's great to see so good many morning. today. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Yes, and then we have Philip. So uh, I think before we start, uh, we are quite many, so we won't have time to, to go uh, around the, the whole room. So we prepared a, a poll that I will share with you. And um, it will, yeah, we will appreciate if you can answer these three questions just to know where you're from, uh, which type of organization you represent. Um, and we apologize that we had to cluster the countries together because uh, Zoom only allowed 10 answers. Um, so try to get some cluster of European country together uh, and we could just on get European country in there so apologize for that but it's just to give us a, a rough idea of who we are talking to and uh, yeah we must say we are really pleased with the the attendance uh, so far i hope people will, will be able to stay and we won't bore you out uh, through this this hour and a half um, but it will, yeah, it will consist of a few presentations, of course, uh, to introduce to you the, the tool, a bit the background of the tool, and then there will be a more active part uh, where, yeah, we will have small, smaller group discussions uh, discussing the, the benefits, the, the potential of, of this tool and the business environment workshop. Um, so, can see that uh, I don't know if you can see the result as well on, on your uh, maybe not yet. I guess I will have to end the poll, but people are still answering. Um, so we have uh, quite many researchers uh, in the room. So I think that would be good for the, the discussion. We have uh, an entrepreneur. We have a couple of advisors, uh, both for two entrepreneurs and two uh, farmers. Uh, we have a couple of business support agencies and rural regional development agencies. Uh, we are missing policymakers and government advisors. Um, so 22, let's see if we get to 23. Um, and then looking at the country, uh, quite few from France, Germany, Austria, uh, Spain, Portugal as well. And then we have Scandinavia, also good representation there. Okay, so we are 23. I'll just end the poll uh, for now. I don't know if share the result. I don't know if you see the result now on your screen. Uh, and also people representing uh, the three different sectors that Rubismo has been working with. So the agri-food, the bio-based value chain, and the ecosystem services. So I think that's quite uh, interesting, but we have a, a good uh, cover there. Uh, we know we have people from Ireland, but uh, maybe didn't have time to answer. Uh, so we, we cover, I would say, yeah, most of the of Europe, uh, maybe missing a bit on the Eastern side, but once again, maybe people didn't have time to, to, to answer. So, all right. Uh, 
thank you for, for answering. So we have a better idea of who we are talking to as well. Um, and I will start with a, a brief introduction of uh, Rubismo and what is Rubismo uh, and why we are here and we worked on this business environment uh, framework. So Rubismo has been, it's a consortium, a Horizon 2020 uh, project. We brought together a consortium and our aim was to support entrepreneurs in rural areas. Um, but the thing is that, well, we, we can support them, provide them uh, as much thing as we want. Uh, but they, we saw, we have been analyzing, I think over hundred successful business cases in rural areas. And we've seen that there's a couple of barriers uh, that restrain and entrepreneurs in rural area to grow, to expand, or even just to start a, a business. Uh, so we have been looking at, yeah, what are those uh, hinders, but there's sometimes also some drivers that will help them to, to move forward. Uh, and, how, and how could you actually reduce those hinders? And, and the aim of course is to get the more entrepreneurs and um, businesses to grow in rural areas. So we, we have been working more on the business model part as well of the of looking at the entrepreneurs. So they need to have you know a, a solid business model, a, a business plan, and so on. But what's around it, what we call the business environment, is also really really important, and it it impacts uh, the ability to to thrive, to develop, uh, and to innovate. So th this part of the project is not looking uh, in depth at the business models, but it is looking at what we call the business environment. So everything that is around the, the, the entrepreneurs and then that either hinder them from developing or actually drive uh, their development. So just to set the, the boundaries here. So, how did we do that? And, and it's been like a couple of steps. Uh, so you see on the left hand side, uh, all the stars we can say represents an innovative uh, and successful uh, business in rural Europe. Uh, so we have been screening over a hundred of those and I think there's like thousands more uh, at least of those very inspiring uh, businesses. And we've been learning from them. Uh, what, what what barriers uh, did they see? What what barriers did they encounter in their development? Uh, and with that, we, we developed uh, a business what what we call the business environment framework, which, as you can see here in the middle, it's still quite blurry, could be quite complicated, uh, still quite high on the academic level. Uh, so, yeah, quite theoretical and maybe try quite hard to, to grasp what it is. And this is what we've done in this activity with the, the business environment uh, tool, trying to make this a bit blurry and hard to understand the framework into a more concrete and, and yeah, easier to grasp uh, model. And that's the, the wheel we developed on the right side, which is the, the business environment um, uh, will that's my colleague Meluk and we'll talk about uh, in a few minutes. So we started from concrete uh, successful businesses, learning from them, uh, trying to analyze what were the barriers, uh, and then trying to clarify all this. Um, so this was the process. So today uh, it's already yeah quarter past, and I'm. Done with that. So we had the check-in, quick introduction. Now we give the floor to Mulliken uh, to present the business environment framework. And then I will come back and, and, and introduce the business environment workshop. Uh, and I will tell you more about this then. And then we have uh, 30 minutes uh, focus group. So we'll have discussions in smaller, smaller rooms. Uh, and finally, we will uh, wrap up the discussions that we had in the different rooms. So I think that's all from me. I will stop sharing and I leave you the floor, Milliken. I hope you can see my full screen. 
Yes. Okay. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Mulukan. I'm a researcher at the Leibniz Institute of, for Agricultural Engineering and Bio in Potsdam, Germany. Uh, now I will present to you the business environment framework, more of the background, some concept and methods that we have used for uh, developing this framework. As already Justin mentioned, he will uh, discuss more about the applications of this uh, framework into, into the tools using these workshops. If you have any questions, please um, write it in the chat or maybe you can also interrupt me. But there is uh, some of my colleagues who are already involved here, and Philip and uh, the others uh, from Rubismo project, so they will try to answer your question. So, um, well, this will be the uh, outline of my talk for today. So I will uh, briefly present to you the motivation for the business environment framework, why we developed this and uh, the uh, development of the framework and the key components and some empirical finding. I'll try to summarize uh, the guidelines which we developed from using this uh, framework and uh, results, but this would be really a kind of general guideline. And finally, I will give some concluding remarks. So I would like to start my presentation with uh, an adaptive business model, as you can see in the business model canvas here. So uh, it is clear that enterprises are really engaged in diverse and interrelated activities. So you can see they need to engage with the key partners. They have to, they have a lot of uh, key activities. They need also for uh, key resources so that they can develop the key value propositions. And they have also really quite uh, diverse activities in the business uh, model, in their business model. However, it is, it is not just their successful activities within the business model that makes an enterprise to become, to become successful and become sustainable. Rather, there are different external factors that directly affect the very existence of the, the business itself or their day-to-day -day activities. So one question which I would like to throw to you so that you can think of during the presentation is like, do you know like, a successful local business model in your area, or have you ever heard of a failed local initiative or businesses? So did you ask the question, for instance, why some are successful or while others are failed? Indeed, there are various external factors which are not within the enterprise circle or easily influenced or changed by the entrepreneur or the manager. For, uh, for instance, enterprise, there are external factors, for instance, uh, changing markets. Uh, there is a lot of uh, consumption habits, the change in consumption habit, consumers' behavior towards uh, product and services really changing due to, let's say, environmental concern, economic concern, and whatsoever. In addition to this, it is an environmental challenge which is affecting the business model. And there is also a change in, in, in skills, there is a change in technology development, which firms have still, they need to acquire the new technology and so on. Above this, firms are also, they are also trying, they need to be engaged in competition with various uh, similar uh, firms who are providing similar or substitute goods. And there is also rules and reg regulations which they have to abide by. So due to these several factors, this business environment or the external conditions is really affecting the very existence of the firm or its day-to-day -day operations. And this one is not only limited to at the local level where this business is really working, but also it could be at the regional, national, and even beyond. It could be for example, at, the, at the European level. It could be even, even beyond that. So um, in order to understand the business uh, environments, there have been few business environment framework developed for different purposes. If you see, starting from the early 2000s, the ease of doing business and until uh, and the mid of 2010, uh, business environment framework from Rose. So these several different business environment frameworks were trying to understand the conditions of the business environment for frameworks. However, this framework have been using or developed for a different purposes. If you see the ease of doing business from Wallet Bank, 
they are emphasizing the rules, regulations, procedures of for instance, some uh, getting location, starting a business and so on. So this is really more into rules and regulations. Uh, whereas if you see the investment climate from BCED 2008, it defined a business environment from a more a complex of policy, legal, and institution and regulatory conditions. And in 2010, uh, Osterwalder, uh, he, uh, he called it a business model environment where he defines a broader perspective to the business environment from the perspective of macroeconomic forces, macro, uh, market forces, and so on and so on. Uh, the latest one from, from 2016 was rather somehow specific in trying to understand the business environment from a very sp uh, specific perspective, including, for instance, the consumer's behavior. So uh, the questions that we raised in the Rebismo project was, why do we need a new business environment framework if you have already such kinds of uh, already developed framework? One of the reasons or the main reason for having a, a new or comprehensive business environment framework in the project was the lack of key aspect in the existing framework, which urged the need for a new and comprehensive business environment framework. Some of the reasons, for instance, uh, the nature of the new business models in emerging by economy, they are not only their, their, their value is not only uh, economical, but also ecological and social values, which are not addressed by the previous framework. Due to this, there are new rules, regulations, and policies attached to this, uh, to this, to, to the ecological and social values they are concerned with. And there is also a number of high number of stakeholders are engaged. In addition to this, the consumer's behavior or perceptions are not actually in, uh, included in the previous frameworks. Due to this, there was a need to develop a business environment framework to understand the, the conditions for emerging and innovative bio-based bio business cases or other rural business cases in, in, uh, in Europe. Of course, this could be applied to other cases as well. So, uh, so we have been uh, really uh, developing this framework. This we have used really uh, several processes to develop the business environment framework. As you can see here, the development of the business environment framework resulted from, of course, from the literature existing framework and the empirical findings and also the criteria and indicators which is developed for this purpose. So the process is really a kind of iterative process where we have really used several uh, several uh, outputs from the project and we are also in discussions and getting inputs and so on. So uh, I think it is already mentioned, for instance, screening innovative business cases as already mentioned, over 100 business cases were uh, uh, selected and we have conducted two, ra two rounds of interviews. We analyze the results and trying to understand the business uh, environment conditions. And later on, uh, we develop criteria and indicators. So all this process, you can see that we have used uh, different inputs and, and, and through the last three years, through trying to develop this business environment framework. So this business environment framework is, as I mentioned, this is a result of really uh, quite different factors, even if it is still, there is a room for, for improvement. Uh, just to give you um, an update, I would like to share you what this business environment framework is and what are the, the key components of this business environment framework using uh, a video, which um, I will share with you just in, in a second. So the this video will, will uh, guide you to um, what this business environment framework is about. If you don't have any, if you have any problem, just let me know. Otherwise, I'll, I hope you can, you can. For any successful business, the external factors of the business environment are critical. They can facilitate or hinder both business activities and performance. As understood by Robismo, the business environment consists of seven sub-arenas. 
Each entrepreneur has to follow special rules, regulations and policies that are designed by public bodies, associations and networks. Institutional development regulates decision-making procedures, limits and requirements for actions as well as the distribution of costs and benefits between enterprises and society. Innovative or emerging businesses that require new technologies or know-how to develop new products and services highly depend on the sub-arena, technology and knowledge. This covers the generation and distribution of knowledge, including research and the development of technical and non-technical innovations, which add value to their products and services. Resources and infrastructure are especially critical for rural businesses. The availability and access to facilities, communication and transport infrastructure attracts businesses, skilled workforce and residents. This in turn promotes business activities in rural areas. Startups and developing or growing businesses rely heavily on available funding and access to financial resources. The performance of this sub-arena depends on access to information on funding sources, time and cost involved in the application process, as well as diversity of financing sources. To keep clients satisfied and attract new customers, a business owner should always understand consumer value and need. This includes their knowledge, perceptions, attitudes and expectations towards the products and services provided. Actions like public opinion campaigns or general trends in society can directly and indirectly influence consumer decisions driving future demand, particularly of innovative products and services. The business competitors and other market players form the market structure. This sub-arena depends on the status of the market, whether it is emerging, growing or reaching maturity. Each business needs capacity building to innovate or improve their products and services to enhance competitiveness. This sub-arena describes the availability, frequency and quality of training and education for businesses and other actors at different levels of the business environment. So um, I'll proceed to, to my presentation. So, um, so you can see, uh, you see that the, the business environment framework and the seven different sub arenas. Maybe here I'll just try to give, um, I'll try to give some, uh, some just indications So um, the business environment framework is already mentioned here. So, um, okay, now it's working. Okay. So the, the business environment framework as already mentioned in the video, I don't want to repeat this, have, are consisted uh, of uh, seven different sub arenas. This is already mentioned, including institutions, funding, technology and development, and so on. That's what already uh, covered in the video. I don't want to um, talk about that. But uh, in addition to this, what I, maybe I would like to give a bit more focus is like the different factors which we uh, use to understand the conditions of the business environment. This including uh, strategy. This strategy uh, refers to the uh, consistency on the strategic orientations of, of actors and their goals and expectations, which resulting from a process of uh, deliberation and selection of various options available. And the other key factor is cooperation, which referring to the networks of, of uh, stakeholders or organizations that are necessary to facilitate change. Here, a clear understanding of who the enterprise work with or what kinds of needs uh, to work with in what way and at what level can enable the enterprise to achieve these goals more efficiently. Uh, the other key factor is a steering structure, 
which is about selecting a particular form of governance in favor of a particular management structure, which is based on some form of communication or interaction between different stakeholders. And the other one is uh, the process, which is as a factor described the, stru the, the structure negotiation and agreement about which uh, process should be managed and which are essential in, the, in order to guarantee acceptance and sustainability of, of change in the process. And finally, uh, as already mentioned, is learning and innovation. This is refers to the capacity of, of, it could be the individuals or the organization itself in each of the sub arenas to actually appropriate and implement primarily new strategies and the, the steering structures and corporations in the process. So when you, when you are assessing the business environment, we have these different uh, seven different sub arenas and we are using these uh, five different fa success factors to analyze the conditions of the business environment. From these success factors, we have developed criteria and indicators. I don't have time to present these criteria and indicators, but using these criteria and indicators, we are able to uh, identify what the, uh, what the business needs and what, what are the actual conditions in the business environment look like. So we are, we are using these criteria and indicators. So in the next slides, I will present to you the some empirical findings that we have uh, um, that we have uh, got from uh, from the from the results and the uh, the business environment framework that we have developed. So using this business environment framework in our database from the interviews, we have analyzed the conditions of the business environment for several business cases. And here I would like to present to you a few results. In, this, in the spider uh, diagram uh, in figure one here, the results shows the gap of the business needs and the actual condition in the business environment. So the blue light color here shows that the business need the business need of support from the business environment, let's say in terms of rules and regulations, while the purple color indicates the actual support or conditions that the firm receive in the business from, from the business environment. And as you can see here, we are able to identify what are the gaps that are actually in the, uh, the needs between the between the needs of the business and the actual condition in the business environment. So for some of the, uh, these are like the, the, the few businesses that are selected for this presentation. So in some of these business cases, for instance, in Crafts Village, Alps, and First Hand Milk and so on. So there are like some hopes that they were really to get more support from the business environment from in terms of rules and regulations. In terms of uh, consumer's value or consumer agency, we have also observed similar results from, uh, from, our, uh, from our empirical findings. Here, uh, out of those uh, these, uh, uh, nine different cases, uh, almost four of them have stated that there is a gap from the actual needs and their needs and the actual condition in the business environment. So these were like some of the few results. If you see further into the technology and knowledge needs of the business and the actual conditions, we have found similar results, particularly in Hermetia and Biogas Prelanda and, and Crafts Village. And from our result, what we, what we found uh, somehow uh, important is like when the businesses are really innovative or when they need like kind of a new technology, this is somehow the needs from, from the business environment here, their actual needs is really quite, quite diverse. You can see the example from, from Hermetia, for instance. And this goes to uh, um, the gaps in training and education, and also uh, um, in resource and infrastructure and market structure as well. So overall, what the, the, the development of the business environment framework, particularly the comprehensive business environment framework, enable us to identify the gaps, what the business needs and the actual condition in the business environment. Um, so this is, as I mentioned, is really rather very few kind of, uh, of appetite so that to, to open your appetite for further uh, interest in this, in this framework. Here I would like just to give you some guidelines for supportive business environment. As I mentioned at the beginning of my presentation, 
I would just only briefly present the general summary of the guidelines due to, uh, due to uh, time shortage. So the first uh, guideline is in terms of strategies, what we found is like the need for a clear and a close over overall strategic direction and well aligned strategies of actors in the business environment, which is one of the, the guidelines that we propose in our project. And the second one is, the need for sufficient cooperation opportunities and a clear understanding who should work with, with whom and how. And the third one is a clear understanding of the key process and agreement on necessary steps for creating supportiveness. In terms of steering structure, we found that sufficient operational management and governance structure in each arena of the business environment. And finally, well-developed and consolidated learning capacities and the promotion of learning and innovation are quite key in the business environmental arenas. These are like some, uh, some uh, summary guidelines. So I will come to, to the conclusion. So the business environment framework or the business environment in general is indeed dynamic in terms of time, sector, actors, and also activities. We found the business environment framework uh, somehow supportive to understand the business environment overall, but this needs to be adapted to individual cases for applications from, from, the, uh, from the experience with some researchers, some students, this is what we, uh, that we have found. And the, uh, the other concluding remarks that I would like to make is, is there is no one side fit all concept to the guideline. We have we have really quite detailed guideline, kind of a general guideline, but this needs to be adapted to the individual or the, to the local or regional context. That's why the presentation, which is uh, followed by this presentation by Justin, maybe helped us to, let's say, to contextualize the conditions so that it should be adapted to, uh, to the local context. So the questions that I would like to uh, like to throw and also uh, following uh, the, for the following presentation is like, how can the guidelines or even the business environment framework could be adapted to other regions and, and in what context? This will be uh, my presentation just to give you a background information about, about the framework, which will be uh, followed by uh, the business environment tool uh, of workshop. Thank you. Thank you, Mulekan. Uh, and I think it's time also to, to launch uh, the second poll, uh, maybe to, to get some of your um, input on the business environment uh, framework. So I'll, I'll launch the poll now for this. It's, it's about nine, nine questions and uh, so yeah, we will appreciate to, to know how, how easy it is to understand this business environment framework and um, the seven different sub-arenas. Then um, there's one question about each sub-arena, uh, how important it is for, um, in your opinion, this sub-arena is. And finally, a question about, uh, yeah, if we are missing anything in, like using these seven sub-arenas, if uh, some, are, some sub are over overlapping too much, uh, if we are missing any, or if, it's, uh, or if it's covering all the business environment, in your opinion. Uh, so that, that's, uh, yeah, that's quite some questions. So I think we need to give you some time to, to answer, uh, even though we already had someone that answered them. Uh, and that would be yeah, quite interesting for us to to know what you think. Um, meanwhile, I can start to share my presentation. And basically, the coming presentation is it's to how did we try to to make this very uh, comprehensive framework. Uh, into uh, just yeah into something that can be useful in, into a tool that is useful accessible uh, and uh, open for all so this is the the aim of of the next presentation really
Um, I see we have already quite, yeah, more than half the participants have been answering. So that's, uh, yeah, good. Good to see that uh, people are active behind the computer. Uh, let's try to get to over 70% answers and, and then I will close the, the poll and, and share the results so you, you can see it. Uh, and I will go on with my presentation because time is flying. Uh, so we have time for uh, discussions. So I think you should be able to see the results. Uh, so the good thing is that the framework is not very difficult. It's uh, quite easy to understand. Um, then I don't think we have to, we'll go in detail into this, but uh, we'll take the inputs on yeah the importance of the different subarenas. So funding quite important between uh, four and five. We see uh, quite similar for the technology and knowledge. Um, maybe we have institution institutional development uh, slightly maybe less important. Is not more number three here. Uh, resource and infrastructure really important. Um, and training and education a bit more split. So uh, I think that's very good uh, input. Uh, and yeah, here I see someone said is missing some parts, uh, and I think that will be um, interesting to add to the group discussion we will have after. So thank you uh, so much for, for the answers. We will uh, review the those answers, and I'll move on with the presentation. Uh, so I'll start with a few key terms because we, we will talk about business environment workshop, business environment tool. We talked about business environment framework. So there's a lot of business environment going on uh, in this presentation. So what Mulliken just presented is the, the business environment framework and the seven different sub arenas uh, that you can see represented in this wheel. You've seen the video uh, dealing with them. Um, then what we, we've done, we've developed uh, what we call a business environment workshop, which is there to, to help um, actors in a local context to develop their business environment. So to make it uh, better for entrepreneurs to develop and thrive. Uh, but to, to support this workshop, we of course use the business environment framework, which is the, the main structure of the workshop. But then we developed also a, a lot of supporting material. So we have videos, we have in, instructions. Uh, th there is more uh, written document and, and uh, reports on the business environment framework itself. So there's quite a lot of, uh, uh, of information. And, and basically all this together is the business environment tool. Uh, so now the good news is that this tool is available online, it's free. Uh, all the documents are there, uh, so it's hosted in Rubismo website in the e-learning platform. Uh, so you have the direct link here. Uh, if you if you Google uh, rubismo.eu, uh, you should find it, and then you go in the e-learning, and you will find the business environment tool in there. So all the the material I will present now, it's it's there already. So um, there's no need for me to share it with you because you, you have access to it. Um, so, but maybe if someone wants to share the, the link in the chat, uh, I think that could be helpful as well. So what was the aim of the business environment workshop? Uh, so the, as I said, the aim is to improve the business environment uh, to better support innovative entrepreneurs in our rural areas. That was the aim when we developed the workshop. And to, to reach this aim, we have, uh, we set different goals. So the first goal is to set the scope and the frame of your business environment. And that should be done before the workshop. And it's about setting what sector do we want to cover? Because we, we, we found it very difficult if you start to include farming and uh, tourism and fishing and all these things together, that then you don't really develop um, uh, re relevant and easy to apply uh, guidelines. It's just become very, very general. And you should also set where 
where do you want to, to work uh, geographically? Is it a municipality or is it the whole region? Is it um, you know region between several countries? That's also quite important to know uh, at which level we are talking about. Uh, then the next goal will be to profile your current status, uh, so to profile the, the current business environment. And we have some tools for that. And finally, to develop uh, adapted and relevant guidelines uh, to, to better support entrepreneurs in the business environment. And, and that's part of the group discussion in, in the workshop. Uh, so we'll see that. But I think the, the most important thing we need uh, to actually get this business environment workshop, it's an initiator. So it's someone that will start the process and, we, and that will initiate the process, take responsibility for the workshop, for the output of the workshop. Uh, and I think in this sense, the initiator will really need to have a strong interest in ensuring that the business environment uh, supports innovative businesses in their region. So that could be development agencies, uh, it could be a cluster, it could be yeah, other associations that you know, their job is to, to support entrepreneurs. Um, so that, that's the start when, when you will, uh, uh, if, you, if you think about having this type of workshop. So briefly on, on the, the process, how it, how it goes. So as I said, we need to have the initiator. So on, on the bottom left, and that will define the context and the setting uh, and set the system boundaries. So what sector we talk about, what region we talk about. Uh, then the second step we of course be to invite the participants and and to give a profile the current business environment uh, and then there is some inspiration uh, because as Mulliken said uh, the results are based on on analysis of uh, about 100 uh, successful business uh, businesses so like trying to learn from them how have they been supported by their uh, business environment so trying to get inspiration is, is there something we could do as well and then there's the group work where you could actually uh, develop relevant guidelines for your context uh, so this is a bit the, the, the process but we'll go more in details in, in each steps uh, i think it will make more sense um, so yeah as i said the first step once you have your initiator is to screen who do you want to invite to your uh, to your workshop to your business environment workshop and what we call the business environment shapers, it's all the stakeholders that affect the business environment in, in some way. So they are there, they support, or you can see, oh, maybe they, they are a bit like hindering uh, our entrepreneurs in the region to, to develop. So it can be a good idea to use the, the, business, the business environment sub-arenas when you screen for, the, for those actors. So looking, okay, who are the main actors in my region regarding funding? Who are the main actors regarding uh, knowledge and education and so on so there's a list of, of potential uh, what we call business environment shapers but this is very uh, really depends on your uh, local setting then i think entrepreneurs should be invited if, even though they are their first goal is not to shape the business environment for other uh, entrepreneurs uh, but their insights and also uh, how they feel they get support is very important for the development of the guidelines. Uh, so that, that, that will have to be uh, done at the start, finding the right people to be invited. Uh, then it will be also important to share some uh, information about the business environment uh, framework. So for example, those have been here, you, you had a, a short presentation, uh, we have two short videos that are there to, to explain briefly uh, what they are. Uh, there's also a written summary uh, of, for people that maybe prefer to read. Uh, maybe you would like also to read so you will be able to translate a bit better. Uh, just to say the videos are available, they are in English, but the subtitles are available in, in I think, literally all languages. Uh, there's also a scientific article if you want to get more um, more background about the business environment framework. Uh, and as I said, all this, doc, all this material is available on the business environment tool. So uh, we, we made it easy. Uh, it's a one-stop shop uh, for you uh, to get it. So uh, it will be important to share this uh, information 
before the workshop and also uh, plan that people maybe won't look at the video uh, will be good maybe to share one of the video during the workshop so people are on the same basis and understand in a similar way what are the seven different uh, sub arenas. Um, and then once they get a good understanding of what are the sub arenas, uh, we developed a, a survey uh, that help you to, to, to profile what is the business environment in your own setting. Uh, so it, it's asking, uh, it's looking at both what is the required level of support, what, what should we reach? Is, is it really that important we have a, uh, the best funding sub arena in our context, or maybe we could be okay with a slightly lower uh, degree of support? And then also looking, what, what do you perceive is the current uh, support level in, your, in the different sub arenas for your context? Uh, and this way, uh, as Mulukan said, you, we get a, a spider diagram and you can see some gaps. So this is an example, a uh, fictive example. Uh, and typically, this is just the base of a discussion. It's, it is no, uh, uh, you know, very uh, hard science behind it, but this is there to support the discussion. And maybe just looking at this, you could see, okay, there is maybe more need to work on the funding and work on the resource infrastructure as the gap is bigger. Um, so this is something you could do before the, the workshop, during the workshop. Uh, we left the setting of the workshop quite flexible. So it's up to the, to the initiator and the moderator to decide what is best for, for you. Um, and, and then the, the, the next step. So now you know, okay, this is how it looks. Uh, we should get better and we need to develop some kind of guidelines and there as well we because it's maybe hard to start from scratch uh, we try to extract all these um, good practices we've learned from the different businesses um, so there is a 10 minute long video that gives some inspiration uh, regarding the supportive business environment there's also some written document on it and as, again one more time everything is available on the business environment tool. Um, the guidelines we extracted, we, we tried to make them quite general. So it's they could be applied to different uh, settings. Um, so we understand they can be seen, well, this is very basic, but what, it, what we, we found is very important is that it's not just applying one guideline will, will make the business environment much better. It's just making sure that we get a, a coherent uh, business environment where we work with all different sub arenas uh, together in a co coherent way. So this is more important than just implementing one guideline at the time, making sure we, we do things together in a coherent way. So once you have some inspiration about this, uh, about the, what could be a supportive business environment, uh, and what guidelines you could implement. Uh, we suggest to have uh, some group work. Uh, and there also we support a template of a, it's a mural, but you could use uh, other similar tools if you want. Uh, and there in group of five, six, seven, depending the, the, the size of your group, you could discuss, okay, what, what could we do to improve uh, this sub arena and what could we do to improve this sub arena? Um, here, we, we suggest that maybe different groups work on different sub arenas. So to be sure that everybody uh, or all sub arenas are covered during the workshop. Uh, I mean, depending on the time, if you have uh, two days to do it, that would be brilliant. Then you could you know, mix groups, uh, have much more uh, in-depth uh, discussions as well. Um, but once again, the, the Workshop settings is quite flexible and it's up to the initiator to, to decide what is best uh, for them. And once you have had this group discussion, you have a, yeah, you, you conclude. And more important is that this workshop will not save, uh, save the whole problem on its own. So it should be part of a process. Uh, there should be some following uh, activities around this. Maybe you already have some kind of consortium or some kind of group that that will be that actually kind of work with 
what we call the business environment and will benefit from this. So maybe ha having this workshop as one part, one activity in your uh, uh, in your business could, could be something. Uh, but more importantly, it's like, okay, what do we do with the results? Uh, how do we follow up on this? Uh, and once again, here, there's no uh, one size fits all. It, it should be up to the initiator to decide what is best in my in my context. Uh, I see there's uh, quite a few um, comments in the chat box. Uh, I will go at them uh, after. So here we have, this is an example, a uh, suggestion of the, how could the workshop go? Uh, it's two and a half hours uh, with different, yeah, time is, uh, the timing, uh, different activities. It's quite a quite intense workshop, uh, we would say. Um, actually, this week we will start in Sweden. Uh, we have a, a workshop, a business environment workshop, but we split it in two days. So we have first day is, is an hour and will be more about getting all the information to the participants. And then the second session will be more about the, the group discussion. So it, it's really up to, to the initiator to decide what is best. But once again, this uh, suggested agenda is available on the business environment tool. So uh, feel free to, to go there and, and use it and, and change it if, if you want. Um, I think something quite interesting, uh, it, it came as an add-on to, to, uh, to this work. Uh, so we basically developed a checklist for entrepreneurs. So the business environment uh, workshop is more for what we call the business environment shapers. Uh, but we found that we could translate those guidelines uh, and to direct them to the entrepreneurs. So we developed uh, a, this list of, uh, of checklists that the entrepreneurs could go and to make sure that they actually make the most of their business environment, uh, that they are aware that oh, there is actually actors that are there to support me and maybe I could get help from them. Um, so once again, this is in the business environment tool. Uh, feel free to, to, to share it with your entrepreneurs uh, in, in your region. Uh, and I think it's, it's quite it's a simple tool. I mean, on the right side, you see this is all the really the, the checklist we have. Uh, general because it has to apply to all entrepreneurs in rural areas but i think many entrepreneurs will, will benefit from uh, reading it um so yeah i think this is to conclude the to go back on the business environment tool uh yeah again you have the, the address uh, where you you will find it you'll find all the all the material so you have the instruction and guidance how to implement the workshop uh, you will have videos and documents explaining the business environment framework, uh, general guidelines for explaining you what is a supportive business environment. Uh, there's also some illustration from supportive business environment. This is a template for the workshop itself, a PowerPoint. Um, also a template, an Excel template uh, to help you to profile the business environment, the mural, checklist is yeah all all i talked about is there in the business uh, environment tool so yeah thank you for the attention uh let me open the chat and i don't know if anybody if there's any answer if i don't know if brendan with or american you could help me is there any yes um i think the i provide the link and there are some questions related to what kinds of language that the material is available, the written materials. And uh, I think it's only in English as far as I know. Right? Yes, yes, it is. Um, yes. Though there is, yeah, Google has a, a strong tool that can translate uh, most of the website in any language you, you want. Um, but at the moment, yeah, it's, it's in English. Uh, and it will be another project if we want to translate in all the languages. Uh, and another important question is from uh, this is related to can this tool or framework <coughs> applied at the I don't know like at, at the level of market town, let's say around ten thousand population. This is a very interesting questions. Maybe we could reflect on. 
I think, I th yeah, I think this different scale, it can be even run at a village level, uh, you know, looking how can they support the entrepreneurs there. And maybe the discussion will be, well, uh, one of the guidelines will be, maybe we need to team up with the other, the other villages and the other towns uh, in the region. Um, yes, it, it is flexible. It can be used at, at different uh, level. I don't know if Thomas, you are still here in Kalmar, uh, how many inhabitants we are talking about the workshop we will have on Friday. Uh, I think we are around maybe, yeah, maybe 20,000. I'm not sure. Uh, there. Yeah. There's a follow up question there, Justin, from Ireland as well at the bottom. How does it differ for business to customer versus business to business businesses? Is there any quick and easy answer to that? Um, no, no easy <laughs> answer to this. Um, I think it, that, that could be added to when you set the scope of the of the workshop. Uh, do I want to support? Yeah, business to customer or business to business uh, type of entrepreneurs. Uh, you could separate them or maybe trying to have both of them um, as the set of your, the, the scope of your workshop. Um, so I don't have yeah direct answer to this. Uh, so. I think that's it, Justin. In okay, good. I don't know, I suggest maybe, uh, is it time for another poll or is it time for you, uh, Brendan and Luis, to introduce the group discussion? Um, do, you have, do you want to do the poll first now? Just yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I can launch the third and final poll. Maybe meanwhile, uh, I can put up the questions maybe to... Um... So I can start also to set the rooms. I think we will have four rooms. Uh... Share the screen just to maybe to... Um... Sorry, Justin, we have Philip as well. Question. Five rooms. All right, uh, I'm looking at the answers. We, yeah, I think we already can close on the poll. Uh, do you want to have a few words on the... The breakout, uh, yeah, so yeah. the breakout session, I suppose, is just to get a deeper kind of feedback from um, participants here today, just on, I suppose, how you would use the tool or if, if you found the tool useful, is, um, just to get a wider discussion on that um, and maybe who should take the lead on, on um, you know, doing a workshop or, or kind of implementing the tool or using the tool to support businesses. Um, so it would be broken to, um, we'll have breakout sessions, so you'd be broken into a room. The, the breakout session will be recorded, but it's just to... Um, just to to get the collect the information for a report so um it the breakout sessions won't be available um afterwards but um we we have about a half an hour is it just a... yes we have half an hour left so should i set the discussion for 20 minutes 
20 minutes of discussion just to, to get to your, I suppose, more thoughts on, on the two and, and the version. Okay, uh, perfect. So I will send everybody to the rooms. Uh, just so you know, room five, I'm coming soon. So but you can start to discuss uh, how important uh, to you are the sub areas included in the tool or any other question. And I'm coming in a few minutes, I'm guessing. Make sure that everybody get there. So um, well, there, I'm opening all the rooms and I see you here in 20 minutes. All right, welcome back, everybody. Hope you had a, a fruitful discussion. Um, sorry for the start, I had to move around some people to make sure we had enough people to get a constructive discussion. Uh, but I've been yeah, moving around in the different rooms, it feels like uh, yeah, discussions were going. And I, don't know what you, I think we should have a quick review what were the main takeaway messages. Uh, and we had Muluk and Louise and Brendan, I think, uh, in the rooms. Maybe Philip and Louise were in the same room. If I remember well. Uh, all right, should okay. we start? Uh, Louise. Well, just from our group, Justin, what came back really was that all the sub arenas are very important and they're all interlinked. And also, as well, they're, they're not, there's, there isn't really clear cut boundaries. Um, so we need to kind of acknowledge that those sub arenas are complicated and the boundaries between them are blurred. Um, what we sort of learned really was that possibly small business associations this could be something that could be taken on by any small business association um in its in any in any in any small area and actually they they vary from um, from region to region but that's that sort of came back um in terms of the leadership and financial aspects uh, it's it's possible that a similar structure exists that this tool could be kind of taken on and used. And I just gave the example from um, Galway County Council that there's forums in other areas that this tool could be could, could be kind of used and, and implemented by existing forums led by local authorities. Um, but obviously there's, every, every areas are, are, are different. And in order to work, it needs leadership you know, not top-down leadership needs leadership for, from all stakeholders, really. So there's no one agency that can be pointed at and said, you lead this. Um, so that's really, I think, what came from our group. Thank you, Brendan. Yeah. Uh, what about your room, Louise and Philip? Yeah, Philip might come in as well if I miss a few points because I missed the start of the conversation. But yeah, like the, the submarines were important. Just one point, I suppose, that was made was about innovation. And, um, but Philip had come out that it's kind of cross cutting across the whole framework. Um, you know, one of the, the participants worked with small, small food businesses, agri food businesses, and how then maybe that, how can they be educated into? Um, to adopt to innovation um, that it, it, he had mentioned as well about the terminology, like the understanding of the terminology as well, that um, it might be difficult for smaller that maybe not have, maybe don't have that education level, you know, they might have lower education levels. Um, and just, I suppose, some of the challenges was, um, it can be difficult to get everyone in the same room together, like all the stakeholders. Um, like I mean, businesses are work, you know, you know, they have their time poor, a lot of them. So um, and then state agencies tend to want to do stuff nine to five, Monday to Friday, which mightn't help or mightn't work for our business, you know, especially the smaller businesses. Um, and then as well, how do you link? The small local business in with the those businesses that are kind of working on an international level. Um, so, I think, yeah, just I suppose needing some time as well to look at the, at the tool and work with it and try to to learn how to use it as well as needed. I don't know, Philip, or uh, if there was anything else. 
I think you summarized very well. Um, maybe uh, to highlight that one doubt that uh, came from from Ireland from Ayosa said it might be challenging to uh, to get actors for, with very different backgrounds and uh, perspectives together in this uh, workshop. Some are more locally focused and others are completely um, detached from the local reality. So um, having somebody who's moderating and taking the leadership here and able to invite participants from all the, all the sub arenas, I think that was also one point we discussed. Thank you, Philip. Uh, Mulliken from your group, anything to add? Yes, I think um, the issue that was raised so um, was uh, an issue in our group, but maybe something new that is in our group was, um, which was really important is that how, how, let's say if there is like an initiation or initiator or a moderator, how could you support this? Would, is it only about the material that's available on the website or do you also provide other supports? This kind of um, um, discussion was there. I think this is really quite interesting because um, for now we are also trying to implement this in a different, in a, in a different project, for instance, in GoGrass project, we are planning to apply this. And we hope to get other interested partners who like to use this tool and to apply it for further in, in their projects, businesses, or I don't know, in some municipalities. In this way, I think I would like to say there is a potential for collaboration. We could support in, I don't know, in providing some materials in even presentation. So if you are able to develop this community who are using this tool, this would be really quite interesting. And um, yes, and also one issue that raised is to find the right partners or stakeholders for the workshop. This is really would be also quite a key issue to get uh, what we needed. Because like you are just inviting everyone, but if you don't get uh, an, a good input, that would be frustrating for everyone. So selecting the right stakeholders could be uh, kind of a good input. And also maybe uh, the other thing is, um, uh, like say some of them are struggling with terminologies they are really quite interested but for someone who is uh, listening for the first time this could be a bit uh, struggling but overall there was a good impression and, and really quite a lot of interest from from our group mm -hmm. okay uh thank you all first for the report and uh, the discussion you had uh, all the participants uh, i think to conclude we can say that the the business environment framework is is could work pretty well. Uh, I think people need time to to understand it as well. Uh, there is interest, and people that have been joining are willing to to have such workshop as well, which is uh, positive. I think we should take this still some challenges we need to to overcome. Uh, as Mulliken said, I think the whole Rubismo, um, at least from ATB. Irish Rural Link and RISE uh, will be willing to, to help uh, anybody interested. So if, if you want to have more information, if you need support to plan one of these uh, workshop, uh, yeah, feel free to contact us. Uh, this is our baby. So we want to make sure it it's can, you know, get up and stand on its own. Uh, so yeah, th this is, uh, I think, talking for all of us, uh, feel free to contact us uh, and, and we will uh, support you. Um, yeah, as much as we, we can, uh, depending on your needs. Uh, thank you all for participating. Uh, I don't know if any of you want to have a, a final word. Uh, we're just running a bit of time, out of time, but uh, I think we manage time pretty well. Uh, yeah, so once again, thank you so much for participating. Uh, we will stay online uh, for a few more minutes if you have uh, any further questions. But thank you. And have a good day. Bye bye. Thank bye -bye. you. Thanks, Justin. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.